Hello, and welcome to In the Privy Council, a podcast reviewing cases heard before the Judicial Committee of His Majesty's Most Honorable Privy Council, brought to you by the Legal Style Blog. I'm your host, Elijah Granite. This week, we're discussing the Bahamian case of Attorney General and Role, the citation for which is 2023 UKPC 13, ba. This is a very important case in constitutional interpretation, with very real consequences for those involved. It turns on a simple question. Is the child of a non-Bahamian mother and an unmarried Bahamian father a citizen of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas? Let's start with the Constitution. Article 6 provides that every person born in the Bahamas after 9th July 1973 shall become a citizen of the Bahamas at the date of his birth if, at that date, either of his parents is a citizen of the Bahamas. Meanwhile, Article 14, 1 states that any references in this chapter to the father of a person shall in relation to any person born out of wedlock other than a person legitimated before 10th July 1973 be construed as a reference to the mother of that person. The discrepancy between these two provisions, one of which uses parents, and the other which uses a specialized definition, is at the heart of this case. If Article 14's definition is followed, as the government of the Bahamas desired, the parties suing for this case are not citizens. If we go with the plain English meaning of parents, the consequence is that they are Bahamians, entitled to the same rights and privileges as any other citizen. At first instance, my lord, Mr. Justice Winder, read the Constitution plainly. The drafter, in his wisdom, had carefully chosen the plain English word parent in Article 6, in contrast to Article 14. If the drafter had wanted Article 14 to apply, he might have used father instead. More importantly, his lordship recalled here, it was a constitution he was tasked with expounding. His lordship said, in a constitution which advances fundamental rights and equality, an interpretation which avoids inconsistency with these rights must be preferred. The government, by advancing a restrictive reading, that would limit the rights of the children of unmarried persons, was going against the very spirit of the Constitution. In the Court of Appeal, a majority agreed with Mr. Justice Winder. The leading judgment came from the majority for my lady, Madam Justice Crane Scott, who found that the discriminatory consequences of the reading the government was proposing would not only strain plain language, but also cut against the very essence of constitutional protection. In contrast, in a spirited dissent from my lord, the president of the Court of Appeal, Sir Michael Barnett, there was a disagreement for the scope of purposive interpretation. His lordship felt that the expansive construction of a constitution in accordance with the spirit of the rights provisions made sense only with regards to provisions establishing fundamental rights. The rest of the Constitution, his lordship argued, was to be subject to ordinary canons of statutory interpretation. One of these canons is that at common law the word parent means only the legitimate parent of a child. Consequently, the legal meaning of parent must refer only to a married legal father, not an unmarried biological father. The government, having lost at the Court of Appeal, then appealed to His Majesty in Council, where we resume the case. For the board, my lord, Lord Lloyd-Jones restated the fundamental point that constitutional interpretation is very distinct from statutory interpretation. Citing the decision of my lord, the Lord Wilberforce, in Minister of Home Affairs in Fisher, 1980 AC 319 PC Bermuda, where the noble and learned lord said that a constitution must be interpreted sui generis, departing, when necessary, from interpretive canons only so that the court can give and implement and recognize freedoms guaranteed by the constitution. Thus, the ordinary canon of interpreting parent as legitimate parent could be displaced here. 
More importantly, the plain language of the Constitution makes clear that Article 6 was intended to be a generous and open provision. The rather forced intrusion of another canon, requiring reading down a clear and expansive word, parents, into a, a very strained definition, was untenable. In any case, that reading could lead to absurd results, disqualifying even someone with two unmarried Bahamian parents from citizenship. This left the final argument, that the definition of father in Article 14, 1, qualified the reference to parents in Article 6. This has a basic linguistic problem. Article 14, 1, only qualifies the word father, not parent. The government tried to argue that because parents can mean father or mother, it implicitly invoked the 14.1 definition. But this was to defy the fact that the drafter chose different words in the two provisions. It is an orthodox canon of interpretation that different words are presumed to indicate differing intent on the part of the drafter. The purpose of Article 6 is to give automatic citizenship to all Bahamian-born children who are the child of a Bahamian parent. Hence, the drafter, quite sensibly, used the word parent. Consequently, the government's appeal failed. Turning to our analysis of the case, a few points stand out. First, this case reminds us of the fundamental point that constitutional jurisprudence is distinct from ordinary statutory interpretation, with a unique, purposive approach. Sir Michael Barnett wanted to balkanize constitutional interpretation by limiting this sweeping approach only to fundamental rights provisions. This ignores two basic things. First, citizenship is a fundamental component of Bahamian rights. And second, there are no unimportant portions of a constitution which can be disregarded as constitutional and treated as ordinary. The instrument as a whole, and in each part, must be construed to give effect to the goal of the Constitution, a liberal, democratic constitutional monarchy governed by law. Second, this case is an insight into the limits of the ability of real politic to curtail the interpretive power of the board. Here, although the board acknowledged the intense dispute in the political arena in the Bahamas here, and the government's insistent approach, it did not allow deference to social and political reality to overcome the obvious interpretive point. The parents used here is an extremely clear term. The argument from the government was really a political one, prompted by hostility to widening citizenship provisions. As the board acknowledged, the electorate had rejected a proposed constitutional amendment that would have eliminated ambiguity caused by Article 14.1. And this was an issue prompting huge passions in the Bahamas. That, however, isn't enough to beat the basic common sense point that the use of two different words means two different concepts. Finally, let's remember the human side. This case has momentous individual consequences for the litigants, who are now recognized as Bahamian citizens. This may change their lives forever in a positive way, and it gives this case a rather happy ending in law. And so on that sweet note, thank you very much for listening to another episode of In the Privy Council, brought to you by the Legal Style blog. If you want more legal content, visit our website, legalstyle.co.uk, or follow us on Twitter, at Legal Style blog. If you have any comments, suggestions, rants, or raves, the email of the podcast is editor at legalstyle.co.uk. We also welcome any ratings or reviews on your usual podcast platforms. Until next time, goodbye and God save the king.